Right, guys, it's time to get real for a second. We all have that one habit. We call it a vice. It's that thing that we reach for a little too often. Now, I'm not gonna name names, but let's just say there's a better option out there and it's called fume. Fume is leading the charge in the flavored air category. And it's not a vape. I don't want you to get that wrong. There's no nicotine. There's no vape. There's no batteries. There's none of that nonsense. Fume is simple. It's clean. And you can use it anywhere. They got flavors like crisp mint, orange vanilla. Trust me when I tell you, fume hits the spot. Fume's not just functional, by the way. It's also fun. This thing is weighted, guys. It's got magnets that snap and click, and you can fidget with it all day long. Plus, guys, there's no charging ever. When I tell you this isn't a vape, I'm not joking. It's actually nothing like a vape. It is ready when you are. I tell you what, for a limited time, I'm going to give you an offer. Go to tryfume.com. Use my code CHAIL when you go there. I'm going to throw in a free fume hopper with your journey pack. This thing is chewable, reusable, and it makes your fume even more fun to fidget with. These guys at Fume have served over 300,000 happy customers, and you can be amongst them. Don't wait, guys. It is time to level up with Fume. Go to tryfume, tryfum.com, use the code CHAIL, or scan the QR code that I was nice enough to place right there on the screen for you. Get your free Fume topper when you order your journey pack today. For Ross came out and he said that Ilya Tuporia is gonna be the champion of this division for a very long time. Frost then kind of laid out his case. And my interpretation of the case, if I was just to summarize it for you, the knockouts over Volkanovski, the clear and clean knockout over Max. I believe Frost's larger point was just the harder work's already done. Like, like things aren't going to pick up and get harder, and you don't have that guy floating around the division. That's kind of what Max was, right? I mean, Max left. He goes up to 55. Is he even going to come back? When he does come back, okay, well, this, this is kind of the boogie monster in the closet. There was a big gap between Volkanovski and Max versus the field. It looked like you could get past Max just by wearing him out, moving him up to 155, and then he comes back. But if I keep looking at the division, I don't know that I see that boogie monster anywhere. And Brian Ortega, just for example, is ranked number six in that weight class, but Brian Ortega has shown a real interest in leaving the weight class and going to 55. So there's not a question that the division is dog tough. I just think that Faraz's point, if I interpret it right, is the path that Ilya went to get to the spot that he's in largely has the big heavy hitters in the rear view. Now, I just want to talk about that for a moment. All right, that's, I'm, I'm done with my interpretation of what Frost was saying, of which, by the way, I agree with him completely. But I do want to stare at that division a little bit closer. There's something that isn't being discussed is Aljo. Historically speaking, and I think that you guys would fully agree that it makes very good reason and sense. When you have a world champion in one weight classes and he leaves the weight class, he has one fight which must be successful at the new weight class that he goes to. And he comes immediately into a world title fight. Now, this is off the top of my head, but I'm pretty good at these things. Isn't that exactly what happened with Piera? When Izzy took his belt and Piera left and went to 205, didn't he only stop off once? Wasn't that stop off against Jan Blahovitz and then it was right into a world title fight, just for example? Well, Aljo was a world champion. In fact, a record-setting world champion at 135 pounds. And when he left that division and went up to 145, I don't hear his name getting discussed very often, which is just rude. But to remind you, he fought on a big, beautiful, coveted card known as UFC 300 in a big, beautiful, very difficult fight of which he won. But there was still not talk on the back end of him going for a title. So why not? And now I believe Aljo even has another fight book. But I don't hear that fight being discussed as the one for Aljo where he goes into a world title. Maybe we should be talking about that. And it shows... I think more the strength or where that division is at. Because I believe 145, much like 155, to be far and away clearly the most difficult divisions in our sport. And you could have a meaningful argument about which one is harder. 
But I do think that you will at least come to the conclusion that it's one of them, 45 or 55, for the, the deepest, scariest talent pool that mixed martial arts has to offer. All right. So I want you thinking about that because one of the big talking points of this week is what could have been, what could have been with a super fight between Sean O'Malley and Ilya Teporia. How massive that could have been. But the problem with that is we'd have never gotten there. Like the thing holding up a, a super fight or a title fight between Teporia and Sean O'Malley is not Marab or Marab getting a decision over Sean or Sean not being the champion. It's none of those things. That is not true. Had Sean won, he and Ilya Teporia would not be fighting. They had not cleaned out their divisions respectively. They just, they would not have even gotten to that fight, which by the way, is supposedly going to be held in, in a bull arena in Spain. The UFC doesn't even play Spain. They're looking to go there. They do not have a venue. And I'm, I'm only sharing that with you because a lot of you are agreeing with me going, yes, Chael, you're right. Okay, but if I'm right, you got to understand if I'm right, but you're also right in that that's the massive fight, we can now make it and we can make it right now. The thing in the way of Sugar Sean and Ilya Teporia is not Marab in that decision. The thing in the way of it is Sean being the champion at 135. There's nothing historically where Dana would have signed off and brought those guys together this quickly. They can now do that fight. They can do it right now. Just so you understand. If we're in this weird limbo where the obvious number one contender, of which is Diego Lopez, isn't going to get a fight for the belt, somebody else is, in this case, Volkanovski. But, but now we're hearing rumors of talking about an interim champion or bring them together or let's go out to Australia. In fact, remove a healthy unwilling Ilya Teporia. That's the way the story goes. I have a hard time believing that. But the way the story goes is Ilya Teporia is healthy. He is not sick. He is not injured. He is just refusing to fight against Vulcan Australia. You can do this dance any way that you want. If the big fight is Sugar Sean and Ilya Teporia, you can make the match right now. The quickest way you're ever going to get Payera and Aspinall together, or Payera and John Jones together. The quickest way you're going to do that is not by Payera continuing to clean out his division. If he continues to clean it out, yes, you could eventually get there, but that road is way longer. If Payera is to lose at light heavyweight, he's in there with Aspinall and Jones tomorrow. That is how we got Payera to the 205-pound class to start with. It wasn't by him cleaning house and everything going his way at 185. He got beat at 185. He no longer doesn't represent, he is at the helm of any division. He can change weight classes. And I'm only bringing that to you because it's not a crazy idea. Sean O'Malley has said a lot of things, including, I want a break. Including, that break's going to be 10 to 12 months. Including to taking that back and saying, no, I'm ready to go. I understand all those things. But what if he did? What if he did take 10 or 12 months? But it was 10 or 12 months to get on some size, and he comes right up and challenges Ilya Tapori. I'm just asking you. I don't see that as a smaller fight. I see that as a massive fight. I think it's a big deal. I think, it, I think it's worth looking at. If Teporia and, and, and Sean is the match that ultimately you want to get to, I'm just here to remind you, you could do it right now. And yes, there was a path where they both have belts and you hold everything up and we go out. But not every champ versus champ is a guaranteed home run. Like, as, as fun as it turned out to be, Volkanovsky versus Islam, as great and close and competitive as it turned out to be, that did not move the needle right off the bat. I mean, that, 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 that needed a little work. It needed a little massaging. It needed a little prompting. Like, you're, you're not guaranteed just because it's champ versus champ. A lot of that is within the fighter's mind. But star versus star, yeah, you bet your ass. Sean O'Malley is not less of a star than he was with that shiny belt over his shoulder. And Sean O'Malley can't go 20 minutes without talking about Ilya Tepori. It's been that way for a while. Sean was the one building Ilya back when you guys knew him as Mr. Hand Sanitizer. Sean was the one talking about, hey, someday this guy, me, Sean goes, he gets his flowers in Miami, and he's talking about Ilya Tepori as opposed to Marab, and what we're now finding out is Nurmagomedov, and at some point in their Sandhagen matters, like he's always had his eye on Ilya Tepori. I don't know if there's a backstory. I don't know if there's something personal there. All, all I know is when you're looking at possible contenders at 145, which looks very thin, it truly does look very thin for as 
difficult of a division it is. It looks very thin. I'm sharing for you right now. You, you've actually got them. I don't know why there isn't talk around Aljo. I don't know that. But I know there is talk around Sean O'Malley, who's not holding up a division and has the right to come back anywhere that he wants, including for a title at 145.